I don't know if this, if this was just a joke or not, but you said, and I saw this on a headline too, on a video, you said that if you were married, you could be faithful or pay the bills, but not both. It was just a That's joke. just a joke? It was just a joke. Okay. Um, I was playing, I said, I'm, I'm not going to do both. Mm-hmm. But marriage is a, very, is a very serious thing to do. That's why I'm not married. I'll tell a female in a minute, um, do you want to be with me forever? Or you just want to be married for two or three years? Because I have a strategy in how a person should live. Mm-hmm. I don't think people should be under one roof all the time together. Mm-hmm. I believe that if I meet you and you got your life together already, well, guess what? I want you to stay in your house. I stay in my house, but I'm going to be faithful. You come see me, I come see you. Because I want my fucking space and time. I'm going to talk all damn day. I want to, if um, you have a bad day and I have a good day, I don't want you to come home and fuck up my day. Mm. You know, because if you're going on a date or you get ready to go out and your wife says, oh my God, I had a bad day. How's that going? Now your day fucked up. Well, I'm like, bitch, I'm happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. fuck that. I'm, I still want to do what I had planned. Right. So, and I don't deal with pettiness. A lot of women are petty. Mm. You know, they create problems that don't fucking exist. Now you find out you're buying flowers and trying to make them happy for something you have no fucking idea <laughs> what happened. I don't do that shit, yo. Not me. I don't got time for it. Um, you were in a movie with Vin Diesel, right? Yes, called Strays. Called Strays. Oh, what's Vin Diesel like in real life? Vin Diesel back then, I'm, I'm quite sure he's changed a lot because people change and get money. But when I met him, Vin Diesel was a nice guy. Um, I saw his whole life change. We went to um, Park City, Utah for the um, film festival. Steven Spielberg was there, uh, and believe it or not, I was the funniest fucking thing in Strays. I ain't going Nigga, to no strip club. Did you guys put crack on that? <laughs> Yo, if you're not gonna go, maybe Fred and I. I ain't going to tri- strip clubs is for motherfucking tricks, man. If anything, I'm gonna watch the bitch to make the most money so I can rob my ass after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time to go and put no dollars in no oh, bitches' ass. No you know the bitch. But I didn't have an agent or anything to push that, my push my situation in that movie. So um, Steven Spielberg saw him, the rest is history, and now um, Vin Diesel's doing um, Fast and the Furious 900. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. He's also very well preserved. I don't know how old Vin Diesel is, but I'm No, Vin Diesel's aging now. Is he? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, look, he, he look his age now. He look every bit of Yeah, he look, every, yep, he look old, that <laughs> motherfucker. Yes, he do. Shout um, out to Vin. <laughs> shout out to Vin Diesel. Uh, I saw that you tore a heckler up at Caroline's Comedy Club. Um, have you ever had a dude waiting for you outside after a show? No, nah, most people are afraid of me, but I'm also afraid, too, mm. because of, of my past. Mm. See, I've been to court. I've been in jail. I, I know how it is to lose something. And if you do have to have a fight in today's world, you don't know if you're going to die or you're going to hurt somebody. And is it really worth it? to lose everything you worked hard for. So I'm nervous, I'm scared because I don't want to lose my house. I don't want to lose the little change I worked hard for. I don't want to be away from my children, Mm -hmm. right? So I try to avoid those things. So when you're on the mic, you are really, you control the outcome of everything. So my goal at the end of the day is make things peaceful. With comedy, um, what was the moment that you thought, yeah, I made it, this could actually be my career? Um, you, I don't never think that way. Okay. I believe every day I got to prove myself. Okay. You know, um, yesterday was yesterday. It's like a ball player. If, you, if you're a real athlete, you don't, um, you know you're good, but you still want to prove yourself every day. Mm-hmm. You know, and you still have to have the confidence to know that you're good. I think one of the greatest things in sports to me that motivates me is um, Joe Montana in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They was losing. I don't know if it was against Dallas or the Bengals or somebody. It was in San Francisco, and they was coming down the field. Mm-hmm. And um, Joe said in the huddle, "Hey everybody, did you see John Candy in the in the stands? You know, this is championship of this fucking world." And, and Joe was talking about motherfuckers in the stands, and went down and scored a touchdown. And that's the way I look at life. Some people look short short-sighted, mm-hmm. but if we was in a stadium, all of us right now in a stadium, I see the whole stadium. Just like when I'm on stage, I see everything on, st- I see everything in the room. Mm-hmm. So when you're a great athlete, you have to see everything in the stadium. Mm-hmm. You know where the security guard is up on, at the top, you see a person just leaving, going to the concession stand. You see the band member walking through the table. You see a car with a trolley going by. You see a couple of women, cheerleaders, walking by. You see everything moving. 
It's like the Matrix. You see everything. That's a great football player. Mm -hmm. Well, as a stand-up comedian, when I'm on stage out of my peripheral, back door, see people coming in, I see everything. And that's the same way I approach life. Yeah. I see I'm down. Some people only think about tomorrow. I am already on the year 2030, 2031. That's how far advanced I think. Wow. And I know you see everything. Like well, last night at the show, my girl said, I got to go to the bathroom. I said, well, don't move because he might see you and say something. Mm -hmm. But after like 15 seconds, I'll just go ahead, go to the bathroom right. and just pray. Because I, I, I don't know how you get down. No, but normally if I see you, if people are doing it too much, mm -hmm. I'll say, excuse me, can you come back for a minute, please? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I can't go. Don't listen. Just for a minute. Because I say real nice to mm -hmm. suck them in. Yeah. And then I say to the whole audience, let another motherfucker get up and don't raise their fucking hand. <laughs> I say, I'm in the middle of a motherfucking conversation. Do not get the fuck up no more unless you raise your hand. The crowd's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Yeah. And I said, sir, you got, you only got to go to the bathroom? They said, yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. They clap, and I let them go to the bathroom. But it's really a seminar, and I don't want you to miss nothing, so I'll hold your ass hostage. So I was actually on my shit yesterday when I was telling my girl to chill. Yeah, 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 because I, I would have got if I'd have saw her. Oh. If I, if I would have started that way, but the show didn't go that way. Yeah. See, because like I said, it was, um, my show is organic, so it wasn't even about that yesterday. But you did check the waitress. Yeah, she was talking too loud. Yeah. Yeah, I said, excuse me, can you talk a little low? She was a little too loud. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I, I, I run a tight ship. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I run, a, a, that's my definition of being a man. And what happened with the one girl, the first one you got into it with the chubby girl, on, she was on your left right yes. here. Uh -huh. What was she, was she talking back to you? That she was just talking back, but see, when a female is attracted to you, they think that's the way of getting your attention. Mm. Where in actuality, all she had to do was wait and have a conversation with me after the show. So women have a horrible way of flirting with you mm -hmm. at the wrong fucking time. Like, <laughs> bitch, I'm on stage trying to get money. You fucking with these people's money and you're distracting me and I don't have time to tongue wrestle with you to go back and forth. But when they're under 30, mm -hmm. not understanding, even pe a woman's gonna be watching this now, it's like, oh, what the fuck? Right. I mean, the kids under 30, they think we're um, trying to be rude or trying to boss you. You know, but there's rules to how you move through life. And Preach. I, I find that I'm tired that we always have to explain ourselves on why you should act a certain way. But young, these, kids, these young kids are sometimes raised by a young father or young mom that didn't teach them this. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike when I was like, the, 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 the,